Welcome to the Health Revolution and today I'm particularly pleased to uh, invite via Skype from Canada Tony T Pantelaresco and uh, Tony is a brilliant herbalist, he is a researcher, uh, an inventor one might say of uh, many healing remedies, uh, he's authored three books, he has a host of incredibly informative videos and an incredibly informative website and I've learned masses from Tony, and uh, I'm sure in future uh, all of you will, particularly tonight. Welcome, Tony. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you very much. It looks like you're in the uh, laboratory. And I am. This is my, my work haven here. <laughs> Excellent. This is where I do it. Get it all done. Brilliant. And um, so... Uh, Having introduced you very slightly, to, uh, tell us what you're doing right now. What are the things that you're working on currently? What's exciting you? Uh, at the moment, I'm, I'm um, trying to formulate ideas in regard to prepping. Everyone's into prepping right now because everyone's looking at the global insanity going on, right? Chemtrails coming down on us, genetics you know, happening, vaccines and all this stuff. So people are prepping, but a lot of times what they're prepping or they're putting together are foods that have all these contaminants in them, like the soys and the canolas and the uh, disodium guanates and all these things. So up the way, if you're consuming these prepped foods that you're storing or stockpiling, you can still wind up with a lot of the health conditions that you're facing now, but without the assistance of uh, people like myself or you or, or uh, health shops where you can go and get antidotes or um, remedies that can alleviate some of these poisons. So uh, we did a show last week and we were just showing people how to make new shelters, how to um, even using trees, knowing the trees and what's around you, learning the botanicals in the area. Um, you know, and so right now I'm trying to formulate things along those lines so that if you are prepping uh, you can minimize getting cancer, for instance. You can minimize having a breakdown of joint issues or minimizing any kind of respiratory issues or brain dysfunctionalities because you're going to need your brain. You're going to need your wits about you if you're in that kind of situation. So the last thing you want to be doing is eating things that are going to have any kind of um, a prolonged uh, degenerating effect on the brain or the neural network or the digestive system or the, the respiratory system or the heart. You know, you, we, uh, if you're in that kind of situation, you want to be using things that are going to be fortifying and upbuilding and, and immunizing, you know, because you're still going to be dealing with chemtrails. You're still going to be dealing with, lit you know, you may not be de dealing with lithium and fluoride in the water, but you may be dealing with other uh, fungal and, and viral and other pathogenic materials that you may be using from your drinking water at that time. Because you're going to have to filter out your own water, you're going to have to sanitize your own water. Uh, so along, along those lines and showing people maybe and getting things ready so that people have an idea what to do and how to do it kind of thing, you know, and what you might want to have on hand when that happens, if it happens. And. Um on a daily basis, uh, what do you feel people should be uh, taking in the way of foods and supplements and perhaps uh, detoxing as well, just on a regular day-to-day -day basis? The, you know, in the old days we might have taken a multi-mineral, say, and now we know that perhaps those aren't as safe as uh, uh, they were if you buy them from a supermarket, for instance. Uh, I know that you're very much into making your own supplements and encouraging and showing people how to do it. What, what, what would you recommend for just day-to-day -day health? Uh, on a regular basis, the, the three top supplements that I would probably push the most would be enzymes, especially if you're past the age of 40, 
iodine, and I prefer the lugols over any other form, uh, ascorbic acid, and uh, sulfur, and maybe phosphorus in some form, uh, whether it be through sunflower lecithin, egg yolk lecithin, or some kind of sulfur-based foods or phosphorus-based foods because of the continually continual overloading of the uh, radiation that's falling from the sky, from the chemtrails, the radi- the um, polymers and the metals that we're, being, we're absorbing from the nano silver that we're eating from the vegetables that they're spraying, uh, and the again, the chemtrail fallout, the fluoride in the water, the lithium in the water, and the other harmful components, the, the xenoestrogens and the, and the phytoestrogens that we're consuming, again, through the drinking water and through the foods, um, the iodine, the sulfur, the phosphorus would help clean a lot of that out on a regular basis. The vitamin C, again, to help, again, protect the body while it's detoxing a lot of this stuff out. These probably would be the most, and the enzymes, again, to help you in the facilitating the bodily functions that are required on a daily basis, whether they're to convert the minerals to antioxidants, to con- convert the fats to hormones, to utilize the proteins and breaking them down to the proper aminos, uh, the antioxidants that need to be utilized by the enzymes to, to could be converted. So enzymes are very key. I think they're probably the most predominant thing anybody should be taking overall. Without them, nothing happens. Probably right next to enzymes, I would probably say probiotics. Um, I would probably say 80 to 90% of the population on the planet today is probably <clears throat> having digestive issues. And that's a result of eating soy, all the grains. There's not one grain that I can research that shows that they have not been genetically altered or genetically engineered. These things thrive and grow inside the body. They do not break down. They create all kinds of mayhem. Um, they destroy the colon. They destroy the respiratory. They destroy the uh, endocrine system, the reproductive system. So, again, I'm... I don't see any need to be eating any grains today unless you can get them from non-GMO and grow them in the greenhouse. I don't see any point to even having them today. Uh, but because of that, a lot of people are having compromised. They can't digest um, a stripping agent. The best stripping agent I have seen to date that works unequivocally without any, any nothing comes close to it that I've seen is sodium thiosulfate. Using that Orally for four weeks, it would uh, five five uh, grams of that or one teaspoon of that with one teaspoon of ascorbic acid before going to bed every night. I've seen that do more for pulling out uh, uh, more gallons, fibers, and amber crystals and metals and uh, layers of uh, off the colon, off the lining. It, it strips the, the layers. It pulls parasites. I've not seen anything that even comes close to this in regard to uh, really uh, uh, doing the job properly. These, a lot of these um, colon cleanse kits, they actually exasperate the colon uh, that are being sold today. Uh, unless they've got a high pectin base or, or charcoal base to them, I don't see the need to be using any of them, unless they, except for the sodium thiol sulfate, which I have to say, uh, uh, using it, have using it myself, uh, I've not seen anything, I mean nothing, that comes even remotely close. Right, well, I'd like to come back to sodium thiosulfate in a moment, but I'd like to rewind a little bit to enzymes. Uh, how would you suggest that we get the enzymes? Any way you can. I mean, I use a pancreatic enzyme. Uh, for diabetes, diabetic people, I give them a high, high concentration of a pancreatic enzyme. There's a company here called Solgar. Uh, they got one of the strongest ones out there that you can buy in a health food store. I'm not sure what you have in the UK, but anything mm-hmm. that's above 50,000 USP units, or uh, they, they may be using FCC units in, in Europe, uh, anything, anything in the high end on the prolytic li- levels, on the amylytic levels, on the cellulase levels, the, am- uh, the lipase levels, the higher the better. Uh, your foods today are completely are being genetically engineered, whether we are aware of it or not. Uh, they're packaging it, boxing it, bagging it, whatever. It's been genetically engineered. If you can get them from using a pineapple, papaya, kiwi, uh, things of that nature, using vinegar, peppermint, ginger, 
These will also help with stimulating uh, uh, galangal. These will also help stimulate enzyme activity and to help break down proteins and fats in the body. Even using roots, uh, herbs like comfrey root or comfrey leaf, this will too will help because it produces pepsin in the colon. Um, anyway, you can get it. I, I have no, uh, uh, whatever works, use it. And uh, I've watched uh, several of your uh, videos regarding fermentation. Uh, presumably one could uh, make one's own own enzymes partially in the fermentation process. Uh, could one open the capsules of the pancreatic enzymes, for instance, and put them in the ferment along with the comfrey root and, and the other items that you mentioned and create the whole thing in one big ferment? I... I really don't know. I can't. I mean, uh, it may it may even break down what you're trying to ferment with it. I um, again, um, fermentation basically is a breaking down of, of a solid matter into a smaller matter into releasing whatever the components are. Uh, by adding the enzyme to whatever you're doing, it may actually break it down for you. I mean, for instance, I tell people to take a B vitamin or B complex or even single Bs and put them either in a kefir or yogurt mix say, two ounces of, of, in a, and open up a capsule, let it sit overnight on the counter, so that what will happen is the, the probiotics will convert and break it down for you one step and start utilizing it for you. So by the time you drink it and get it down, it'll get past the first pass in the stomach, gets into the colon, it's absorbed immediately. So instead of getting a 25% absorption rate, you're getting closer to 70% absorption rate. And so, yeah, therefore, you get a higher concentration of, for instance, B12, folic acid, PABA, uh, B1, choline, inositol. These now will be absorbed and be more readily utilized. So, again, I, I encourage people, especially if you've been compromised, IBS, Crohn's, leaky gut, um, and any other, other the 25 different uh, intestinal disorders that they're prescribing today, this is a godsend for a lot of them, and even the yogurt can help even regrow a new colon for some people who've had uh, 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 surgical procedures to shorten the colon. Uh, using things like colostrum, MSM, quercetin, this also helps repair the colon. So, again, anything you, you're going to put in a yogurt, like a B, especially your B-complex, uh, it it's nothing beats it. I mean, anybody who tries it well, within three days will tell you, hey, their energy levels like whoo right off the chart because now they're absorbing those nutrients more efficiently. And as far as a source of uh, B vitamins, uh, what do you think of brewer's yeast or nutritional yeast? Not today. Uh, I would. I don't. I wouldn't use it today, uh, primarily because uh, we've been so inundated with genetics. A lot of that is bound to the colon. So any yeast you consume today is going to create a problem, and it may even cross, uh, create an overgrowth because it's going to react inside. If you clean it out, it may work then. But for the most part, a lot of people will, have, will take brewer's yeast and have a reaction. And the primary cause of that reaction is because it's mixing with something that's already stuck or embedded inside of you that hasn't moved in whatever time frame it's been there. And so now you have a reaction. When people tell me, for instance, that they have a dairy reaction or they have a, um, a wheat reaction, sometimes it's not a dairy reaction that they're actually having unless they're drinking store-bought pasteurized crap or, uh, you know, GMO wheat. It's the GMOs that are causing the majority of the problem. It's not whether you're eating meat or vegetable or a dairy product. It's the fact that you've got residuals inside of you that's been there for quite some time it's been accumulating pollutants and other things, and then when you do eat something of any value, there is this, you're getting a you're getting what a Herxheimer effect, but in a different form or fashion. So until that is cleaned out, or until uh, or to, or um, reduced drastically, you're always going to have these kind of issues going on. I had a 28 year old client come to me a few years ago, and she took bentonite clay and psyllium husks. And out came a small piece of yellow Lego, uh, a bit of a toy which she feels she must have swallowed at least twenty years earlier for it, and it had been stuck in her colon all that time. Yeah, that, that's not a well. Now think of this now, right? We've been eating GMO products 
Okay, in, in Canada, United States, I'll, I'll have to speak from this end because, again, you guys over there have the labeling. We don't. But we've been eating GMO products since the 70s here, okay, without anybody being aware of it. You know, we were introduced to these things. This was, this was the, uh, the laboratory of the planet here. You know, we've been experimented on and exploited because we still can't label our food. We can't, we can't have full disclosure of what we're eating here for some reason. You know, we have to be continue, we're continuing on this road of experimentation and exploitation of the human uh, uh, immune system here. So anyway, we've been eating this crap for a long time. You know, and so as a result, we have a lot of this stuff embedded in us all over, not just in our colon, but in, you know, people have restless leg, and they have uh, arthritic issues, they have pain issues because these poisons have accumulated and have, and have acquired in our systems. So then when somebody goes and tries to take something that has a benefit, there's a reaction. So when stuff starts coming out, you're like, you're like where the heck did that come from? You know, what's, what's going on here, you know? Uh, and and you don't remember that you know ten years ago you ate a food that might have had a a preservative agent in it that didn't allow it to break down. So what this stuff does now is it clumps. And we've got jams over here that have preserving agents that won't won't will keep the thing on the shelf for ninety nine zillion years, and then you eat it, and it's not you can't break it down either. So where is it going? It doesn't always come out of you. So. Uh um, which form of B vitamins w would you go for? Uh, I would use the store-bought stuff. Even though they are synthetics, there is enough credible evidence to validate their use. I'm a big believer using niacinamide. I'm a big believer using B1. I'm a big believer using choline and B5. Uh, those are the top four B vitamins I push on people uh, because the, especially the niacinamide, Everyone's got anxiety issues. Everyone's got sleep order issues. Everyone's got stress issues. Stress issues. B3 seems to resolve a lot of the stuff. Uh, B5, a lot of people are always tired and worn out and exhausted. So I give them B5 and B1 uh, for strength and power and for endurance. Sometimes I'll combine it with rhodiola as, a, as the herb of choice that I go with. Uh, some people, again, they're having problems with their memory and they can't focus. So again, the choline, folic acid, B12, you know, these are things that work with the brain, and acetal, B1, uh, B3, you know, they all are there for the brain. But again, nobody's getting it because it's not being manipulated in the colon like it's supposed to because you've got layers, literal, literal layers growing in the colon, which are blocking the ducts in the colon that allows you to absorb your nutrients. So what's happening is you've got this plaster from the grains in the soy that is causing this issue. So what happens is the bacteria that's supposed to be there to convert it has now become a negative bacteria, or the wrong one. Instead of uh, converting these things and working with your body to assimilate and to utilize, it's now uh, causing the opposite effect, causing it to be uh, self-destructive and broken down. So as a result, you're not getting these things. So those are the ones I've given. Those are the ones I've seen profound effects. All of a sudden, mental clarity starts to come back. All of a sudden, anxiety issues drop. All of a sudden, the stress, they can withstand the stresses of life that they have to deal with. All of a sudden, they've got stamina from the B1. They, they can go a lot longer. Um, people with diabetic neuropathy, they give them MSM with B1 and uh, serapeptase. All of a sudden, within 10 days, they, they can feel their fingers and their toes again. You know, I get them off the grains, I get them off the sugars, I get them off the soy. And all of a sudden, they're like, boom, they're, they're, they're back. They're, hey, I can feel again. Whoa, I can walk again. I can, I can, I've got strength in my legs again. So, I mean, they do, they have merit. Until something better comes along, which I haven't seen yet, um, and until we start really um, looking at the true cause of a lot of the issues today, and, and, it, and it's not because you're eating this or that or whatnot. You know, vegans believe they've got the answer. You know, vegans, you know, back in 1904, vegans, then meat eaters outlived vegans by 11 years. Okay, from 1904 to 1960, 1970, all of a sudden vegans outlived meat eaters. What happened between 1904 and 1970? Something changed in the meat, not the meat itself. What happened was the grasses that the cows were eating were no longer being fed to the cows. What happened was they started feeding them grains, which caused the biology of the cow to change. Then they started slaughtering the cows, taking the dead carcasses of the cows, and feeding them back to the cows. 
Then they banned that, and then they took that, uh, so they couldn't do that directly. So they fed the carcasses of the cows to the pigs and the chickens, took the waste material from the pigs and chickens, and fed that to the cows, which is perfectly okay. Yeah. Now, it's, so this is this is okay. Now, what they've done in England, in the UK, they brought in some cloned cows and mixed them in with the food supply in the UK without telling anybody. It just came out about a year and a half ago. So, so this is what's been going on. Now, the vegans say, well, this is the reason why you shouldn't eat meat. Now, and I say to the vegans, you know where they're doing the, what they're doing with the fecal matter now, right? They're putting it in the fields. So all those genetics that they're feeding those cows are now being fed into the soil, which you are now eating. <laughs> and they're saying, well, it's organic. Yes, organic is carbon-based. Doesn't mean it's GMO free. It doesn't mean it is chemical free. That's supposed to be the reality, but it isn't. Uh, and again, you will hear this, and, and this is, might be an outrage to some people, but I've talked to farmers uh, from France who are telling me, told me that they're planting GMO seeds in the ground, growing the crop, and calling it organic, which technically. They are right in what they're saying, because all organic means is carbon-based. All that is, is just has been genetically altered, but it's still a carbon-based food. And just getting back to the B vitamins for a moment, let's say somebody buys some store-bought B vitamins, and it says the dose should be one. Um, if they want to get the effects you're talking about, do you think one's enough? No, no. H how many would you think, probably? Again, it depends on the situation. I mean, that's a tough one to say. I mean, how are you living? What, how many hours a day are you, 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 you put? I put a 19-hour day in. So I'm taking approximately oh, about two to three grams of uh, niacinamide a day. You know, I'm taking probably uh, B1. I'm probably taking about the same amount, two to three grams. Again, if I follow the bottle's instructions, I'm only supposed to take one, 150 milligram pill a day. That, that, I'll burn that in an hour. So, I mean, you know, so they all depend on... How you're living, what you're doing for a living. Uh, again, I, I use my brain a lot, so I'm constantly using nootropics. Whether I'm using choline, whether I'm using procedum, you know, whether I'm using B1, sulfathiamine, uh, whether I'm using rosemary, sage, you know, I'm using all kinds of stuff to keep my brain going and keep it active. Um, I'm eating tons of saturated fat from different sources. Uh, I'm using lots of cheeses for the bacterial. And the mineral content and the protein content. So, again, it would depend on what you're doing. The, the labels on the bottle are a suggested dose. That's all they are. Can't prescribe anything to you because then they would be considered or construed as a drug. In the United States and Canada, it would be anyway. So, again, they can only suggest that you take one, you know, 50 milligrams or 100 milligrams a day for a, a, a daily dietary use. Now, you're using it according to orthomolecular uses, then you're going to use the required quantity that you need to sustain whatever you got to sustain or until you balance off your body. That's how orthomolecular works. So, again, I, I, these are just guidelines for, for most people. Uh, but when you're looking at the bottle, let's take one a day. Well, that is not a drug. It's a food. Okay? Do you eat one meal a day? You know, how much meat are you eating a day? How much fish are you eating a day? How many eggs are you eating a day? How much cheese are you eating a day? You know, how much vegetables are you eating a day? How much fruit are you? You know, are you eating the daily minimal dose of, of fruit? You know, we follow the RDA guidelines, which are obsolete and archaic and complete, uh, completely uh, stupid. Uh, if you follow that, you'd be you'd be you'd be malnourished. So again, you have to look at things. Like, what are you doing? What are you treating? What are you sustaining? What are you supporting? And you base it on that. And uh, uh, you were mentioning vitamin C as one of the important ones. I, I I believe it is too. I try to take about ten grams of vitamin C a day. Um, and uh, when I first started doing that, I did notice improvements in my eyesight and a number of factors. And Having read, you know, the orthomolecular medicine people, particularly the work that Frederick Klenner was doing in the 40s and 50s, curing polio and every single infectious disease, uh, it's really criminal that people aren't aware of the power of vitamin C, particularly in very high doses. Oh, I agree with you. Yeah, you know, I was just watching a video today. A friend of mine sent me this one. Uh, it was a British doctor. I forgot. I, I didn't get the name. 
this guy was a genius. He's telling that if you look at the eyes and look at the heart, the heart and the eyes are completely connected. So whatever's going on in the eyes is going on in the heart. And if you're using vitamin C, your visual will come back and so and the heart will clear up on its own. Pauling said the same thing. Klenner said the same thing. There was another guy, uh, Ross said the same They're all saying the same thing. And they're saying they don't need to go through all these x-rays. They cholesterol, they, the guys say they cannot. You can't even examine cholesterol with x-rays, and yet they're causing over 700 cancers a year by x-raying people for cholesterol issues. So it's ludicrous today what we're, what we, we're putting up with, the right. horse, horse manure that we're putting up with. It is amazing, partic I mean, particularly with cholesterol, because Abraham Hoffer, you're one of your Canadian counterparts, uh, did a clinical trial showing that uh, niacin and niacinamide uh, or nice in particular, uh, was a cure for cholesterol uh, back in the 60s, I think. There is no problem with cholesterol. Back in 1939, there was two scientists that did a research in cholesterol. You could eat all the cholesterol you wanted to, and it would not kill you. Yeah, I eat probably more cholesterol in one day than some people eat in a year. Okay? And I don't care if the cholesterol goes to the freaking moon. It will not kill me. Okay, Ever. The problem with cholesterol is sugar. They found that what caused the cholesterol issue was grains. When you eat a grain, any grain, don't care if it's orgasmically organic, whether it's from dark side of the moon, whatever. When you eat a grain, that sugar reacts with your body. And what cholesterol is doing is protecting you from the ravages and the damages of the grain. That's what it's doing. So it becomes sticky and it peroxidizes. So what stops that from happening? More cholesterol. Okay? You can use things like rosemary. It blocks that from happening because it has a, a component in it equivalent to BHT, which is an antioxidant, keeps the fats from per periodizing. You can use sage as like tea in teas or put it on your fats or whatever. It stops it from happening. Using vitamin C and lysine also clears up any kind of buildup that may occur from the sugar damage that the cholesterol is reacting with. Niacinamide or niacin is what was used uh, for the liver because there was a liver buildup. But the reason why there's a buildup in the liver, again, is because you have a deficiency in lipase. You're not producing enough li lipase or there's not enough lipase in the fat because people are eating plastic today, margarine. They're not getting enough B5, which converts the, the cholesterol to uh, part of the uh, component for hormones and for energy. They're not producing enough L-carnitine, which again uh, utilizes the fats again for energy and gets rid of them. And they're not producing enough bile in the liver. So again, this is the reason why you're having these problems because you're eating margarine instead of the saturated fats that you should be eating. I'm a big, big fan of eating saturated fats because it protects us from viral infections. So I don't have a problem with people having high cholesterol. Matter of fact, if it's not above 240, you're open and prone for viral infections. So I don't see a problem with cholesterol. Good. And uh, I agree completely with uh, uh, exactly everything you said. Uh, uh, I, I like to eat unpasteurized dairy. I think it's one of the great joys in life. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, now, the, one, the next thing uh, that you mentioned was iodine, and, and I too think Lugol's iodine is, is the way forward. Um, uh, most of the people like Dr. Brownstein and Dr. Derry and Mark Circus seem to uh, put forward the idea that 12.5 milligrams a day uh, is a sort of uh, normal dose, but uh, perhaps up to 50 milligrams uh, if there's a, a thyroid issue to be dealt with. How do, how do you feel on that? Even higher, even higher. Uh, yeah, I, you know, it depends what it is that you're dealing with. Again. Look, they were giving up to two grams, two grams a day, treating people with almost every issue under the sun back in the early 1900s. Nobody died. Nobody had this reaction that they're talking about that you're going to get. I've taken as much as 12 drops of my Lugos, which is a 5% solution, okay, which is approximately over a hundred, close to 120 milligrams. The only thing that it did, the only thing I saw with it was I could have walked on water. I had so much energy. Okay. And I mean, it gives you such a boost and such strength. I, uh, uh, I think Lugos, in my humble opinion, is probably the best iodine to be using. Okay. I, I think it's more superior than the nascent. The nascent is a good iodine. I'm not saying it's a bad one. Iodoro is a good way to go, which is another form of Lugos, and ISO is another one. But I think in all honesty, Lugos is far superior to all of them because it not only deals with the thyroid, because the nascent iodine does deal with the thyroid very effectively as well, 
But Nublos deals with the digestive system, so it protects your digestive system. It protects your reproductive system, your endocrine system, especially for women. Women need twice the iodine that men do because of the estrogens that they convert, because iodine converts estradiol to estriol. So you need the iodine. This is why so many of these women are having problems with their reproductive organs, because they don't have the iodine in the body to regulate the conversions of these hormones. Men are having problems with the prostate issues. Why? Because they're producing estrogens from the DHT. Well, it's binding to the receptor sites. What does iodine do? It helps convert that so it gets it out of the body. So we're not, you know, by, between using that and sulfur, you can clean all this up. But again, we're not, we're, you can't have iodine. Oh, no, it's, and it's even got a poison thing on it. You know, oh, it's, boy, every cell in your body has iodine in it, yet it's poisonous. We'll figure that one out. Yeah, they're putting poison signs on all the good stuff now here. Uh, borax, which uh, used to be considered, well, I mean, in, in the medical or in the literature, it's 20 times safer than, than salt. Now, borax has got warning labels and hazard signs. Everything's supposed to kill you. Um, uh, let's talk now about sodium thiosulfate. Uh, the, 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 the wording, obviously, is slightly off-putting. It sounds like a chemical, but clearly it's an excellent form of sulfur. And um, uh, uh, w w would you say even better than MSM? Oh, superior, superior. MSM is good. Okay. MSM is good. The sodium thiosulfate is way better. If you're looking for detoxifying and pulling poison out of the body, removing radiation out of the body, removing heavy metals out of the body, removing these damn more gallon polymers coming from the sky out of the body, pulling uh, stuff it, it, to, to take parasites, uh, uh, Fungal, bacterial stuff out of the body, I, nothing. I, in my mind, my opinion, after I've used it, I don't see anything that even comes close. Bentonite clay and all that stuff is, is, is okay. This makes that look like candy. I, I have to tell you that um, when you combine it with the vitamin C, your glutathione levels jump off the chart. It protects the liver. It pulls stuff out of the I felt that stuff cleaned me all the way to my pancreas. That's how how effective it was. I mean, it this thing was just amazing, amazing. So the first thing you notice when it starts to work is your joints and the wrists and knees and hips feels like there's a relaxation going on. So any calcium deposits that might be accumulating in these areas, you may find start coming out. The thing about it, though, is if you do use it, you must, on a daily basis, restore the mineral content and the probiotic content. Excuse me, because it takes no prisoners. I mean, it everything, if it's there, it's going. So you need to, and it's a good thing that you keep putting the healthy bacteria back in the colon and the mineral content back in the, in the system so that while it's pulling out the bad bacteria and the bad minerals or metal, metals, you're putting in the good minerals and the good bacteria back in the system. Nothing comes Close, nothing. Not that I've seen anyway. And it also has the wonderful advantage that if you uh, earlier have spilt your Lugol's iodine, a solution of sodium thiosulfate um, completely neutralizes it. I, I accidentally poured a whole bottle of iodine on a white carpet and got it all out, actually, which was a bit of luck. Yeah, uh, ascorbic acid would have done the same thing. All right. Yeah, that would have, even, even uh, well, it depends if the, if the carpet was white, you could have even used chlorine. But yeah. So I'm saying, yeah, that's the drawback about this thing. Like I said, it pulls everything out. So it will pull iodine out of your body as well. This is why you need to, res you have to put back the minerals back in. Right. And um, you were saying earlier about a teaspoonful of sodium thiosulfate, about five grams a day. Five grams with five grams of vitamin C. Mix it with about three ounces of warm, warm water or cold water. Drink it down. It'll taste like crap. It, it, it does. It's, there's no masking it. It just it tastes terrible. But chase it with another six or seven ounces of water or a tea or whatever. If you feel any, and I mean any inclination of any kind of disturbance, I guess that's a very polite way of putting it, a disturbance starting to happen in the no, lower nether regions, immediately go to the washroom, put a little toilet paper in the loo, Park it and let it go. I mean, it will come out like a volcano anyway. So, but this this will cause keep the backsplash from coming back. But it will come out of you like unbelievable. I mean, and you will see stuff come out. You'll you'll actually sit, sit or scratch your head and see where the heck, how long has that been there, kind of thing. Because you, you just won't believe what will be coming out of you. Yeah, I've had people who've um, 
uh, claimed what, what's come, well, yes, I won't go into the details, but yes, strange and wonderful things come out that you wouldn't yeah. have previously guessed were in there. Yeah. Well, uh, it's, um, it's something to behold. <laughs> something to behold. I mean, whoa, where'd that come from? <laughs> so, so maybe the first time one, one does it, one should do it on, the, on one's day off, perhaps. Ah, uh, four weeks. If you really want a good job on it, honestly, four weeks. Um, to take it with meals or? Oh, no, no, no. Do it before bed. The other beautiful thing about this stuff is when you're doing it, you will not feel hungry. Uh, you'll eat a meal, and I will tell you to reduce the portion sizes of your meal because you will not be able to finish it. The reason being is you're now going to be absorbing what you're eating at a more efficient rate of way of, of uh, absorption. You're not going to feel the need to eat, honestly. I, you know, I was going like 15 hours gaps, 12 to 15 hour gaps between meals. I'm still that way today. I, I, I eat maybe every 12 hours or something like that. And um, I just don't feel the need to eat all the time. I'm, and and I, again, I don't eat any grains. I don't really, I do, I do cheat on the sugar part a little bit sometimes, you know, uh, uh, like with, uh, I do use honey, I do use maple syrup. But once in a blue moon, I'll eat a ginger thing that has some sugar in it. But uh, generally speaking, I don't feel hungry. I eat my fruit, I eat my meat, I eat my fat. I'm always eating saturated fat all the time. I'm eating cheese all the time. Um, I make my ice cream with sour cream and yogurt because I make my own. That's all probiotic stuff. Uh, I'm, at, I'm even adding fat to that. I'll add MCT oil to it. I'll add glycerol to it, honey. I'll add my fruit. I'll add my cinnamon powder. Sometimes I'll open up a capsule or two of CQ10 and some um, uh, manganese and zinc to regulate the insulin. So I'm eating this stuff. So whatever sugar is in there doesn't go too all over the place. Um, but I make my own fatty protein type meals. And quite frankly, honestly, I do not hunger. I mean, I hunger when I get to that, when I need to eat, I, I eat, but I'm not like I got a snack and binge all day long kind of thing. I, I'm fine. I maintain my body weight. I'm between 180 and 185 pounds, which is what, about 75, 80 kilo. Um, and, my, and like I said, I put in a 19 hour day. So there you go. Right. Very good. Now, um, you can also use sodium thiosulfate uh, along with a number of other, other uh, important ingredients in a bath to, to detox. Um, would you like to expand on that? Um, from our gallons users, what I suggest is using Epsom salt, which is magnesium sulfate, sodium borate, which is borax, <clears throat> TSP, which is trisodium phosphate, baking soda, um, um, regular salt, and you can add the sodium thiosulfate with it. Usually I add about a quarter cup of each in there, and I even add a, a um, about a cap of turpentine with it as well. And for those who are suffering from this affliction, because it's not a disease, don't let anybody tell you it's a disease, That's, that would be complete nonsense. It's basically, it's just you're being poisoned from the aerosoling and from the genetics that you're eating. This will start to draw out stuff. It'll draw out amber crystals. It'll draw out those fibers. It'll draw out if there's any kind of, uh, if you've got um, uh, tinea or any type of other uh, infection going on in the skin, it will draw it out. You'll see all kinds of stuff uh, uh, come out of the, the tissues. Now, as you can see, my face is cleared up uh, uh, exponentially. If you look at my earlier videos, you'll see where I've got marks all over my face from the more gallons. So you can see it's starting to clear it up more. Uh, the baths are key to pulling radiation out of body. The baking soda, the borax, and the sodium thiosulfate will pull radioactive material out of the skin. You are constantly on a daily basis being exposed to radioactive material from the chemtrails. They have plutonium, thorium, uranium, and, and um, um, strontium dropping down on you all the time. Uh, the Europeans have had um, the nuclear reactors from the Baltic states have been leaking radioactive material for the last 40 years. Uh, in the United States, they've been leaking as well as in Canada. And then they're blaming Fukushima for a lot of this stuff, which I think is a lot of nonsense. I think what the big problem is, is these chemtrails, they're, they're being overlooked as the main culprit for the radioactive fallout that's falling down on us. Everyone's got everybody looking over here. Oh, Japan, Japan. But really, what's, nobody's paying attention to what's coming down. 
You know, and some people don't even believe it's even happening. You know, oh, that's just a line in the sky. Radioactive lines in the sky is what they are. Um, a friend of mine from France just sent me a video. Uh, I don't have it right off the bat, but I couldn't believe this chemtrail. They, they flew a chemtrail over the Atlantic, and instead of spreading it across the sky, it came down like a drape into the water, and it completely surrounded the boat. I took one look at that and said, what the heck are they doing now? This is, this is just pure insanity, and this is what we're all being exposed to. So this, would, this bath will definitely help a lot of you. I had a woman contact me from, from Paris, actually. She said she's on the verge of committing suicide. I said, no, don't commit suicide. It's no, no, there's no reason for it because the affliction of this Morgans was nobody. I mean, everyone thought she was crazy. And I said, you're, you're, if you've been afflicted, you are the canary in the coal mine. You are the one or the, the ones that have your immune systems are functioning. You, the, your body's reaction is a normal response. It's trying to get it out of your system. So don't feel in any way, shape, or form that you are the oddball. You're the norm. The rest of them who are not reacting because the stuff is still festering inside and accumulating, they're the ones that are the, uh, the oddballs. Okay, And when it does hit them, because of the magnitude that's going on inside, when it does manifest, it'll be exponential. Your systems are fighting it. Your systems, you have the normal um, uh, immune functions going on that are supposed to be happening, and that's what happens. You get loaded up, it comes out. It's being forced out through some means, whether it's through your diet, supplements, or through your immune functions. So this bath will help a lot of you pull a lot of this stuff out. So you mentioned Morgellons, and I think that's had a lot more publicity in the UK than it has in England. The first time I came across it um, was uh, some rather unfortunate man explained to me, somewhat embarrassed, that um, he had uh, what appeared to be metallic fibers coming out of his penis. Uh, and uh, uh, people seem to be experiencing uh, rather strange uh, phenomenon like fibers coming out of their bodies. Um, can you describe for people, uh, in case they don't know what Morgellons is here, what uh, what the symptoms are? Uh, you'll be in pain. Uh, it'll attack your body. It'll, you'll be in pain. It's try Morgellons basically is an affliction of these these biopolymers, I call them, or uh, uh, which are nanoparticle sized. Okay, they got nano silver in the sky, so I don't encourage anybody using any nano silver products. Nano aluminum, cadmium, silica, barium, uh, chromium. Uh, you got, like I said, the radioactive materials I mentioned thorium, uranium, plutonium, strontium. They've got bacterial stuff in these things. They've got uh, microbial things in these things. These things come from down from the sky. They fall down within 22 to 23 hours. What they do is they penetrate you on a cellular level, your cells, where they require to absorb the nutrients. These things get inside and get lodged in. What nano silver does is stops the cells from doing their normal functions. It starts the reprogramming process. The silica and these things actually amplify your body's electrical charge to, to activate these things. The biofilm in there gets released in your body and starts to reproduce. So you have a a, what they call a binary attack on the immune system. So what starts to happen eventually is you'll start having lesions start in the form. Sometimes they'll look like red blemishes. Sometimes they'll look like triangles with circles in the middle. Sometimes they'll look like squares. Sometimes they'll look like a little zigzaggy lightning bolt kind of thing. Or some of them will even look like a circuit board trying to form. Some will have letters and numbers starting to form. So you know... This is not a thing of nature at all. Matter of fact, the doctors are saying this is all in form of psychosis and all this other nonsense. It's all baloney. This is a, a lab-created affliction, nothing more. Just like these H17 something that they're doing now, 7N, this is another lab-created affliction. All these viruses that we've had over the years, the Chinese flu and the Hong Kong flu and this flu and the... Hispanic flu and the American flu and the British flu. These are all made out of a lab, all of them. 
Okay, Canada and the United States have been working together with the Mosquito since 1984. This is common knowledge. You can find this up. They released the genetically engineered mosquito along the St. Lawrence River and down in Florida. And after, shortly thereafter, people were starting having afflictions like the restless leg and fibromyalgia. The West Nile mosquito, <laughs> I don't think came from the West Nile, to be quite honest with you, unless it came from a lab in the West Nile. So, again, when we're looking at a lot of these so-called pathogenic materials, they're not, um, they're, they're, these things are created, okay? They are created. That's what more gallons is. It's a, it's a created affliction. And what it does, like I said, it starts to rewrite your DNA and tries to alter your genetic code. It's attacking your genetic code where it's at its weakest. All right. Thank you for that. Um, I'd like to ask you a couple of specific questions. Um, uh, we, uh, I get asked um, by people say, I wake up in the morning and I'm, and I'm just feeling as exhausted in the morning as I was when I went uh, as I went to bed. What, what do you recommend for people who aren't full of the joys of spring first thing in the morning? Shut off your smart meter. What if they haven't got a smart meter? And then shut off your Wi-Fi. Shut off. You might have towers over there. I'm sure you have towers in the UK. Just like we have, dude, they are pumping radio frequencies through the body. We have the smart meters here. Uh, a lot of people have that condition here because the smart meters are pulsing. The uh, there, There's over 90 to 140,000 pulses going on on a daily basis. This is breaking down the myelin sheet around the cells, which is protecting the cell. So what's happening is while you're sleeping, you're getting pulsed all the time, you know. And I'll bet you any money, you can do a survey at 3 a.m., everybody who's not having any sleep is awake at 3 a.m. because that's when these pulses are at their climax. That's when they're sending and transponding their signals. And you have to understand that with the more gallant, with these metal particulates and polymers that we're being absorbed in our cells, we become a transceiver. Okay, we are, we are not only receiving these signals, but we're sending them out as well. So we're like a living antenna. So one of the things you can do to offset this, again, is to use something that's going to help purge this out of your body, but use saturated fat because the saturated fat helps sustain cellular integrity. You need to have that cellular integrity for them to communicate with each other. Okay, Things like wheat germ oil, which also helps protect and rebuild the myelin sheet around the cells. Consuming things like eggs or lecithin, sunflower lecithin or egg yolk lecithin. Notice I said sunflower lecithin or egg yolk lecithin. I did not say soy. Okay. Soy, you should avoid like the plague, whether it be fermented or otherwise. Okay. You shouldn't be consuming these pea protein products that they're trying to sell you either. These things, work, they're no different than the soy. They have the same estrogenic value, the same phytate value, and they attack the organs in the same levels. Anybody that's going to tell you today that eating fermented soy is okay, okay, they don't have, a, they don't have, they don't have enough brains to tie their shoe if it was Velcro. It, honest to God, that they, they're that stupid. Because any form of soy you eat is a goitrogen, number one, so it's going to attack your thyroid. Once I attack the thyroid, the brain and the heart do not talk to each other. And you're going to have these disruptions going on in the head, number one. Number two, it attacks the pancreas. Cuts down the capacity for the body to produce trypsin, which is required to break down protein in the colon. Okay, Causes pancreatic cancer, whether it's fermented or otherwise. Three, they have phytates in them. doesn't matter which way you go. And someone will say, well, you can ferment the phytates for a day. Really? Chinese were doing it for over two years in lime, in calcium. They're barely fermented three months in aluminum. And you're getting that in, the, in these products today. So leave the stuff alone. So anything that has saturated fat, consume. That will regenerate and repair those cells. Using things like B3 and glycine. Glycine also helps pull heavy metals out of the brain. Using salt, sea salt, okay, that will also pull metals out of the brain. Salt is a brain detoxifier. What are they telling everybody to do? Reduce your salt. Reduce your salt. Why? Because you can't, you lose this here. The salt isn't there to clean out and flush out the toxins out of the brain. You, you know, all of a sudden you're a derelict. You're walking around. You don't know who you are, where you are, what you're doing because you got all this metal and this stuff in the head. Sulfur, MSM, use it. You know, uh, alpha-lipoic acid, taurine, methionine, cysteine, uh, acetylcysteine. These things help pull the stuff out of the body. Garlic, onion, leek, chive, you know, 
Mix them with vinegar. Mix them with wine. Utilize these things. These will pull and draw these things out of your body. Uh, indeed. Um, one of the other things that I've heard you speak about is um, liposomal coating. Uh, a few years ago, like, like, like many of us, I suppose, I heard about the use of ultrasonic baths to liposomally coat. But now uh, you've enlightened me to the fact that uh, uh, you can liposomally coat, or, or in other words, uh, enclose something in fat like vitamin C or glutathione uh, just by um, uh, mixing it really thoroughly in a liquidizer. Could, could you briefly explain what, how people at home can take their fat-soluble substances and lipos liposomally coat them? Good anyway. I mean, there's lots of ways of doing it. The, the, the guy with the ultrasonicator, -sonic I mean, that's just one way. I mean, he's basically just vibrating the thing so the molecules heat up a little bit so that the stuff will fuse. Basically, when you heat something up, you open and expand the molecules, and when you mix it, it, it will fuse in there. You can even use a solvent, um, regular alcohol, even. Mixing it together, and then by mixing the alcohol, it opens up the fat so it will receive whatever you mix with it. So, basically, you're, you're heating up, uh, let's say, sunflower lecithin or an egg yolk lecithin or even a coconut oil or a butter, okay, anything. Okay, um, even if you take a frying pan, just to give you how, how simple this is, take a frying pan, put some butter in the pan, heat it up, scoop out the uh, scoop out the cream. Now you've got the butter oil, right? Put it in your herbs. The herbs will heat up. The oil will turn color. Okay, it'll turn green or it'll turn. It's absorbing. It's fusing in with the oil. You just made a liposome. So uh, all a liposome is is basically a fusion or a, or a. Um, or a, a combination of a fat with whatever you want to put it with, okay? And it's, and it's basically it's used as a carrier. So initially what it was used for back in the bodybuilding days was it would take certain supplements so that it would bypass the stomach, so it survived the first pass with the hydrochloric acid. It would sur survive the colon so that the bacteria, the probiotic one, fermented all the pieces and then get into the liver. So once it got into the liver and the lymphatic system, your body would absorb it through the liver and the lymph, lymph nodes. That's how they, they were, initially that's what the idea was. Uh, they were actually using another component by using sugar molecules to do the same thing. They would fuse sugar with certain things so that again, when it got inside of you, your your uh, insulin would carry these things through the body more uh, in, in another route or another pathway. This is nothing new. This has been going on for quite some time. Uh, again, when the, when the guy did that, it was a good thing he showed. I, I, I think it was uh, an excellent uh, demonstration he did. I didn't like the fact that he was using soy lecithin, but the idea was that he um, was demonstrating that anybody could do this, but you can also do it with a blender. I mean, you're heating the material. The blender is producing a centrifugal force. So whatever you're mixing with it, it's going to force it in there either way. So uh, there's more than one way of doing this. And there are probably other innovative ways as well. So, I mean, this is just... Another way. Of, I just showed you another way. That's all. Right. And uh, so by doing that, uh, one's probably increasing the power of, say, vitamin C by six, seven fold, probably. So it's well, yeah, pretty it's economical. Gonna, yeah, it's going to survive. I mean, it's going to get past the stomach. It's going to get past the colon. And it's going to go right into the liver. And then when the liver starts to break it down, well, uh, they used to sell a product. I don't know if they sell it over there in the UK. It was called absorbable palmitate. All it was was ascorbic acid mixed with palm oil. Okay, that's been that's been out there for over 30 years over here. This is like I said, this is nothing new. This has been going on for quite some time. And the idea with this scorbo palmitate was to get the vitamin A and the vitamin C together into the liver. So again, uh, yeah. Anytime you design something at home, you know, and again, and and again, when we do the videos. We always emphasize this is just one way of doing something. It's not the only way. It's not the end all, be all, or do all. Okay, it's it's not. We are just opening the door. We're giving you a uh, a ground level entry point where you can start. Hey, I can do this, and then from there you can expand your horizons and make these. And I say make them better and share the health because you can make them better. Okay, and to I don't want anybody restricted with the idea that you got to follow only my way because it's not the only way. Uh, and I would be an arrogant ass if I told you that was the case. What all I'm showing you is a methodology. It's not the only method, but it's an it's a method that can get you started to expand your horizons. So don't let anybody bamboozle you with anything that this is the only way because there's many ways of doing things. And when you understand. 
how your body reacts and responds to what is what will absorb in a fat. For instance, okay, let's say I want to get CQ10 in my body. Okay, I got a weak heart, let's say, and I need to get CQ10 up. Okay, so I'm going to mix that maybe with palm oil, which has got the vitamin E in it, high level, all, all tosferols in it, got all the tocotrinos in it, it's got the uh, lycopene in it, which is good for the heart. It's also got the vitamin A in it. And now I want to add CQ10 to it. Okay, so I can fuse that together, take the component, make my own, gets in my system. Now it bypasses everything, gets down in the liver, the liver absorbs it, sends the CQ10 right to the heart. And now I got a higher yield of CQ10 going to the heart. So you can do it now if you add black pepper to that. Black pepper prolongs the use of CQ10 in the heart. It's an interesting thing how piperine can actually make the CQ10 more effective. Or adding vitamin C with the CQ10 and the palm oil. Now this vitamin C also augments the CQ10. So like I said, we've got a lot of different ways we can combine things and do things that will augment whatever you're doing. So again, uh, it's just one method. Um, I'd like to rewind slightly to what you were saying about um, nano silver because about three years ago, I was looking at various uh, ways to make colloidal silver, and I stumbled across uh, a patent, um, and um, this was for a type of nano silver, and the, the FDA, curiously, in America had given approval to this. They hadn't approved any, any other silver products, as far as I was aware, and I read the patent because I was interested in, in how they were making it, and it turned out the patent was registered 50% uh, by the Department of Homeland Security and 50% by the American government. And um, I, you know, one or two alarm bells started ringing there about uh, nano silver. And uh, I notice now that quite a few companies are selling nano silver where they used to sell colloidal silver, claiming huge benefits. But something in me has been worried about this from the start. A good reason for it. Nano silver stops the, D the DNA production of the cell. It binds. It gets into the brain, gets lodged in the brain, which causes all kinds of dementia issues and other issues because it is a metal poisoning. They are using nano silver to regulate the chemtrails so they can keep the chemtrails in formation so that they don't shift and get blown all over the place. And then it comes down on you. They are spraying nano silver now in crops. I've got one report on my script of the show on my web page where they actually, after four washings, couldn't get to stop out, okay? And, and it actually penetrated the outer fiber membranes of the, of the plants and got inside. So you are getting silver poisoning. I would not, I wouldn't give nano silver to a pig. Now, if the FDA okayed it, ooh, that's, that makes it all, all, all okay, especially if the FDA approved it. Yeah, you know, the FDA, I have my own adjective for FDA, and I can't say it on the radio because it's not very polite, but... They, they, if they okay it, I'm going the other way. To be quite honest with you, I don't, I don't. They just like they, they said that that tobacco was uh, cancer causing. Tobacco is not cancer causing. It's the four thousand chemicals that they're spraying on the tobacco that's cancer causing. But they're blaming tobacco. So I, the science, the United States at one point in time, back in the fifties and sixties, they had a credible. Their scientific community has some credibility when it came to actual research because at that time they were actually looking for answers today credibility wise i mean you may as well look up a google research to find any information because it's about about the same it's it's a lot of fluff and and, and bluster uh i wouldn't trust anything today uh i always tell people go back look look at anything pre-1980 seriously that if you really i mean i mean seriously think about this for one second what has the medical community cured since 1930 zero <laughs> so some so if the fda is approving something it's zero <laughs> you know i don't not to me i wouldn't use it i mean all my research is indicating to me that um the military is using 70 parts per million and higher of a colloid not nano that's what they're using uh to to prevent them from getting inflicted or whatever Nano silver binds with you. It doesn't flush out. They tell you it will pass through your system. That's a lot of baloney. Okay, collo the colloids do. Because the colloids are only like a millionth of an inch, whereas the nano is a billionth of an inch. So it's, only even, it's even smaller than your cell and gets caught in the cells. doesn't come out. So, and again, you're inundated with nano silver. It's just like back in the 60s, okay, BHT was a big 
antioxidants they were using and BHA in all foods, right? Especially if they had fat. Then they found out later that BHT was causing cancer. It wasn't that BHT was causing cancer. Because BHT, all, every man that I know should be using BHT because it blocks estrogen. It actually helps the body blocking the estrogen conversion so they can sustain their testosterone. It fights cancer. It kills all kinds of viruses. But the problem with it back at that time, which nobody really was looking at properly, was that every food source had BHT in it. So what wound up happening was you were getting inundated with BHT and so it started causing a reaction in the body because it was reacting with other chemicals in the body. Nobody was looking at that, at that from that scientific approach at that time. All somebody said, oh, BHT is causing cancer, so they blocked it. And the reason I think they seriously blocked it wasn't because it was causing cancer, because it was stopping people from getting sick with viral overloads. So you wouldn't have had these hepatitis or these herpes or any of these other uh, conditions going on if people were still using BHT in minimal doses uh, in their diet. It would have protected them from these viral, over, uh, viral infections, just like iodine and other things. But they said, oh, it caused, just like salt, causes it can cause damage with blood pressure issues and what and cholesterol can cause issues with the heart. These have not been nothing but one big pile of lies from the FDA. So I can't see seriously how anybody can take these this organization seriously with any credibility. Yeah, it does seem unfortunately that they are a total bunch of crooks these days. That's a great shame. Um, what one of the um, uh, other things that you mentioned earlier. Uh, was uh, trisodium phosphate, another slightly frightening sounding chemical name, but clearly uh, as a source of phosphorus, a very interesting uh, material. W would you like to tell us a little bit, bit about trisodium phosphate? That's a, that, that thing is a beauty. If you've got any kind of issue with bone or pain or um, energy issues uh if you mix that properly uh with like uh, we mix it with chlorophyll potassium uh citrate and um potassium chloride and um magnesium citrate with a little aspirin it's the it's the best rheumatoid anti-rheumatoid thing i've ever seen i had a woman that was coming to see me she was getting shots in her shoulders because she couldn't raise her arms after two months of this stuff, she'd never had another shot again it was amazing she said i can't believe i can move again blah blah, blah without any pain uh, it's a very high-powered electrolyte mixture when you do it that way. The, it's alkalized at 12, uh, which really doesn't mean a whole lot, really, unless you're dealing with a uh, fungal or bacterial uh, overload. Um, phosphorus, if, you see, if you've got wax in the ears and you're always having a problem with wax, it's because you have a phosphorus deficiency. You start using this stuff, also might start seeing the wax fall out by itself. Uh, it does protect the male endocrine system. It does protect the heart. Uh, and again, it's very cheap, very inexpensive. Anybody can get it. Um, I know in Europe it's a little funny because I talked to one guy there from Belgium and he couldn't, he couldn't get potassium chloride. I'm thinking, what? Why, why can't you get potassium chloride? But then some guy from uh, the Caribbean called me up to Bahamas, called me up this week, says, you got to get that by prescription down there. <laughs> really? <laughs> why? So, I mean, this is, this is uh, the European Food and Safety Authority, the FDA, the health protection branches in Canada, they all should be flogged seriously and and uh, i think they should be banned uh they, they they're they're doing a disservice to humanity uh in europe and over here so i mean and in other places that are have got these ludicrous regulations going on i think the same thing they they should be flogged flogged and hung and and removed because they're not doing anybody any good um they're actually impeding health on so many ways and what they're okaying and how they're okaying some of the things today, it makes me scratch my head because their own research sometimes tells you that what they're okaying is it shouldn't be okayed. You know, when they look at they look at for instance aspartame and, and some other things that they've okayed in the past. You look at the research, I was like, how the heck did they even ever okay this? How did they ever the heck did they ever okay soy as a food? There's no merit research whatsoever to validate there any anything on it, yet it's okay. So when you look at some of the poisonous materials, everybody should be asking themselves, why is this a poison? Not because you read and it says it's poison. Oh, that's poison. I shouldn't touch it. Okay, so you, you know how to read. Now, learn how to think. Why is that poison? 
you know, ask yourself, why is this a poison? You know, and don't do a Google search to find your answers because you're not going to find, you're just going to hear what mainstream says because that's all Google does. Google is a good search engine. If you want to sell a product, go to Google. But if you want to do some research, go to university uh, uh, sites and educational sites and scientific sites and start looking at these things from the right perspective. How these things become poisons? How do they become beneficial? How were they used? How much was used? What environments were they used in? This is how you have to interpret some of these things. Not, oh, it's a poison, so you're going to stay away from it. But, see, that's not thinking. That's just hearing and obeying. Learn to think. I always tell people this. I think one of the best sites to research that I've found is possibly greenmedinfo.com. They're good. Uh, some of their info is sometimes sketchy. But, I mean, for a lot of newbies, it's a, it's a great place to get started. Uh, you go to PubMed, go to NIH, because that's where a lot of their Green Med, Green Med info is getting their stuff from. It's from PubMed and NIH. Uh, do a Quirrell.com search. This is another good place you can you find some information. Start looking at university studies themselves. I mean, this is where you, the rubber meets the road and a lot of this stuff, um, where you can see that, okay, they've given, let's just say, CQ10 for curing cancers. Okay, they gave rats X amount of CQ10 per kilogram of body weight to cure certain type of cancers. Well, you can extrapolate that and figure out what it would be for a human body weight. But then you've got to also look at what did they feed those rats when they gave them that CQ10 at that dose. The, again, these are things that you've got to kind of pay attention to. So, again, and again, this is just an example. So it's not the, again, don't get this is it kind of thing. It's just uh, I'm trying to exemplify an idea so that when you're doing your research, and you're looking at this stuff, you're actually looking at it with, a, with an analytical mind, not just to hear and obey. Oh, I just, you read something and you just, you're taking it for face granted. Start asking the question, well, what, how much did they take? Well, what were they doing? How much did they actually use? You know, and then start formulating your own recipes you, because you can do this because they're actually giving you the information there. So, okay, it, they gave the rat, let's say, 100 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So you take the bat, rat's weight, figure out how much, let's say, a 10-kilogram rat, they gave uh, a, a gram of uh, CQ10. Well, then convert that to the human body, okay, and figure out the, right, the, the ratio, ratio that down. You might be surprised. Uh, you might get similar results. Sometimes you might not get any results because there might be something else missing in that equation that they may not have left in that study. But this is a starting point for, for a lot of you. And uh, you mentioned chlorophyll earlier. Um, uh, uh, chlorophyll uh, is not something that I've generally seen sort of being sold in, in a bottle in the health food store with chlorophyll written on it. Um, I don't, don't know whether you find it that way in Canada. Uh, uh, what is a, a good source of, of chlorophyll that one could buy as a supplement rather than eating it as green leafy vegetables? Well, we do sell it here. It's it's common here. It's common in the U.S. I uh, see again. I don't don't know. Didn't know that it was the case in Europe. Uh, a guy in Belgium told me he had to buy buy a powder and mix it, pre-mix it. So, which may not be a bad idea, really, if you sit there and think about it. Um, there is a company here called Bernard Jensen's. I like them. Um, there's actually another one. I can't think of the name of it right off the bat. Uh, it's one of the cleaner ones that I've seen. Doesn't have any parabens in it. Nothing like this. Some of the older stock he had did have it, and they don't now. Um, you could probably extract the juice from a parsley or a, or peppermint, and then simmer that down and boil that down to get your high concentration of chlorophyll. If you can't find it uh, in a bottle, it's another way of doing it. Because that's what they're basically doing is they're filtering it, they're they're cooking it down, cooking it down, cooking it down to get the uh, chlorophyll content. So you could do it that way if you wanted to as well. Again, I don't know of any what you might have there in the UK. Um, I'm, in that regard, I'm ignorant, and I, I have to apologize for that because I'm not familiar with all the stuff that you have or you don't have there. Um, but if, if you have to buy it in a powder form and pre-mix it, I think that would even be better. And what do you think of um, uh, Klamath Lake uh, algae and, and spirulina and chlorella? Uh, do, do, you, do you reckon those are worth taking? Uh, quite honest with you, I never... Seen them live up to their hype, to be quite honest with you. Um, some people swear by them. Some people say they, it's done a world of good for them. Uh, but in my 
perspective and with the people that I've come across in my dealings, the percentages have been very, very little. Um, whether it lives up to its height completely, again, I've not really seen that. Now, again, I'm not knocking the product. I'm not saying it's not any good. I just personally, just from my own personal observations with the people I have dealt with with real health concerns, have not seen it do all that it says. Now, that's not saying it's not a good product, and it may have benefit as a supplement. It does, uh, spirulina does have a component that does kill cancer. There is a, um, uh, uh, enough research on PubMed and, and NIH to indicate that the, what is it, the phyanacin, phyanacin in it, whatever it's called, does kill the cancer cells in the, in the system. But again, I, I, don't, I don't push the product. I don't sell the product unless somebody really wants it. Uh, I, I'm not a big advocate of it one way or the other. If somebody wants it, he, there it is. If somebody doesn't want it, again, there it is. So I, I don't push it one way or the other. Could I ask you, have you ever had an experience with Ormus as a material, monatomic gold? I've used it years ago. I didn't see anything with it either. I didn't see the, again, it lived up to its expectation in my system. But then again, that could have been because I was using a lot of other things already and I was already fortified. So there really was maybe not a whole lot there for it to do. <laughs> maybe I was already okay kind of thing. So, I mean, again, I've not seen it. I've heard people contact me. Uh, again, I have not heard a lot of people give me a whole lot of positive input on it either, other than for putting it in the ground for plants. Now, again, if you're getting it that way and it works, use it. If the plants are benefiting from it and you're growing stuff in, a, um, in plants, and use it. Again, I'm not knocking the, the product. I'm just saying just from my own personal observations with it and from what the, the feedback I've gotten from people, the people that I've talked with anyway, have not given me really any clear-cut indication saying, yay, it's a good, wonderful, you know. But something really works, people are really exuberant. Oh, wow, yay, ha, huh? and, and they tell you, you know. I've done this, and boy, I feel great, and, they, and, it, and it's, it's not a... Um, placebo effect where after two weeks it doesn't work anymore it's like they, they uh, you know i've been on this stuff for six months i've been doing this for a year and man i can't tell, believe the difference from a year ago so when you hear stuff like that you know something's going on uh again i'm not knocking the armor's product i'm just saying i personally have not seen anything to me that makes me go yippee kaye on it okay so that's and that's basically a, a fair assessment right um, I'd like to ask you another question specifically about eyesight. Uh, we mentioned vitamin C. What else would you recommend uh, to restore eye eyesight? Taurine. Taurine is a big one for that. Taurine, zinc, um, your enzymes. I uh, There was a guy who contacted me on YouTube uh, when we first got started, and we he took three of the formulas, okay, and and you can go look it up. It's on. It's in the commentary there. Uh, the guy said he was blind in his left eye for thirty years, and he used the ginger, onion, grapefruit mixture. He used the analgesic mixture, which these are two burning hot mixtures. Uh, the ones with the pineapple, the bioflavonoid, the turmeric, the uh, paprika, and the cayenne. And then he used the. Um, the controversial formula, which was the uh, trisodium phosphate with the chlorophyll. Now, they used all three in conjunction with each other. And he wrote back and said the guy got his vision back. Now, will that work for everybody? I don't know. You know, I, I don't really know. Uh, but it did work for this indiv particular individual. Uh, so, again, uh, it all has to do, I think, with whatever's in the eyes, uh, taurine is a main component of the eye. SOD is huge in the eyes and in the lungs and the chlorophyll uh, with zinc and copper produce SOD. So somehow in that formulation there, it all worked together to open up the blood vessels, the tiny capillaries. It opened up the oxygen flow. It cleared out whatever was going on there. The quercetin and the onion and the... And the, um, the um, um, Oh, I guess the bioflavonoid and the grapefruit also helped with the permeability of the visual. 
So, I mean, there's a lot of things that could have done it. I don't not, I, again, I've never stopped to really pinpoint what might have done it, but that's what he told me happened. So again, and again, I'm not saying it's going to work for everybody and I can't make that proclamation, but he told me that after he used this stuff, after 30 years, he got his vision back. So, and, he, and you see that in those comments all the time. You know, people are using, they're doing stuff that I never really even thought of doing. And also they're getting these results. I'm thinking, well, really, this is awesome. So, and then they're sharing it, which is good. And you mentioned bioflavonoids. I remember one of your videos showing uh, how simple it is to make your own bioflavonoids at home by uh, taking the, 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 what, the whites from the rinds of citrus fruits, drying them and powdering them and consuming yeah. them. Yeah, I mean, that's how they make them in the market. Um, we have a product here in the grocery store that they use for a thickening agent for making jams. And that's all it is. It's just the white part of the, the citrus. That's all it is. So, and that also has high levels of pectin in it. Well, that's where the, that's, pectin pulls radiation out of the colon. It pulls metal out of the colon. So, I mean, how, how much cheaper can you be? You combine that with a little garlic or a little onion and you got a detoxifier of the colon. You got a, you got a thing that's going to open up your blood vessels. You got a thing that's going to keep your, your blood vessels permeable. So, I mean, your heart doesn't have to work so hard. I mean, you, I mean you've got, there are all kinds, I mean, if you read the labels, Seriously, you read the labels on your health food supplements and you actually do it, you know, again, use the old gray matter that God gave us and you start analyzing the, the components in those. You can make a lot of stuff at home. What's lycopene? Tomato paste with oil. How hard is that to make? You know, uh, bioflavonoids, what are they? You know, well, the white part of your, your citrus, the skins usually of your, of your fruits. Uh, so, I mean, how hard is that to make? So, I mean... Um, some of, the, some of the simplest remedies that you can make have the most profound effect on your health. Yes, exactly. Well, uh, thank you very much. And before we finish off, uh, are there any particular other uh, tips and advice you'd like to give that uh, would be particularly pertinent for people who want to restore their health right now? Read your labels. Seriously, read your labels. Don't assume anything. Uh, don't believe anything. <laughs> it's a Mediterranean, it's a Mediterranean thing. There, don't believe anything. <laughs> you know, uh, re be skeptical. Be analytical. Uh, read your labels. Um, understand. Just because you can read something doesn't mean you're really uh, evaluating what you're reading. Just because something says it's organic does not mean it's safe. Okay, that's a, that's the biggest farce that's been going for the last thirty years. Um, the foods in Europe might be safer than they are in the United States and Canada, but not by a whole lot. This is the most ironic thing I find uh, with uh, people. You know, you can you will ban a GMO product in Europe, yet you allow a GMO corn or GMO soy to be fed to the cattle or the sheep or the goats or the chickens. And that fecal matter has to go somewhere. So if that fecal matter is containing the genetically modified organisms that are being fed to these animals, they are going into the soil. So you're still getting GMOs in your food. But this is something that I still can't get my head around. Well, we're going to ban genetically modified corn because it causes tumors in rats, yet we're going to feed GMO corn to cows and, and chickens and to pigs and sheep and goats. I fail to understand the, the logic in this matter. And then afterwards, the fecal matter from these GMO organisms are going back into the earth via through the feces of these animals. So again, I have a difficult time getting my head around how this is not going to be spread airborne. But anyway, so read your labels and really understand what you're reading, number one. Uh, seriously, you know, it, uh, I can't, um, I can't uh, uh, push that enough. We got a site in the UK called healthaccess.com. We have information there as well as we do in the US. Uh, uh, John there has been pulling the stuff on this side, so it makes it easier for people in Europe to access mm -hmm. the stuff. Take a look at the stuff there. We do have a lot of information on this kind of things on both sides of the Atlantic so that you can have access to it. Feel free to download this information for yourselves. Share it with other people. We encourage you to do this. Uh, and again, that's the number one thing I would tell you to do. Be Use this. Don't just accept. Don't, you know, I hear and obey. Accept 
analyze and think seriously. That's the best thing I can tell you. Well, that's excellent. And uh, just uh, to end on a piece of good news, um, I read today that the Russians uh, are calling for a 10-year ban on uh, genetically modified foods. And I think as the Russians certainly had some influence perhaps with stopping this, the war in Syria, that uh, perhaps they'll have some success in stopping uh, the prol proliferation of GMOs. Now, uh, for those of you interested in, in Tony's work, we're going to be putting up uh, all the details of uh, his site and uh, uh, some of the details of what he's mentioned and references. And uh, I'd like to thank you, Tony, uh, for coming on. Uh, we've been very generous of you to uh, spend time with us, and uh, I hope at some point uh, we'll be able to talk again and go into more depth and talk about uh, so many of the other uh, subjects that you're so knowledgeable on that we haven't scratched the surface of. You know, certainly the viewers need to know that we, we, we've covered less than perhaps 1% of the, uh, the things that Tony generally talks about as he is a font of, of knowledge, has been at it for a long time. So thanks, look, thanks for having me. I appreciate you having me on here. I really do. Uh, you know, if anything I can do to help, I, I don't mind helping. Uh, the whole idea here is to share the health. Uh, you know, if I can get, help you promote whatever you need to promote to help people find their health, hey, all the more, you know, I, I have no problem with that. So yeah, I mean, thanks for having me. I really do appreciate it. I hope the uh, audience in the UK and Europe uh, can get something out of this and, and gain. I really do. Uh, you know, again, feel free to again with our stuff to download whatever, whatever you have, uh, for sure. Um, do the same. Uh, but again, again, thanks. I, I do appreciate it. Thank you very much, Tony. All the best, and thank you all for watching.